The Wars of the Roses had their beginnings in the 1370s, some 80 years before any actual fighting broke out, when Edward III created the title of Duke for his five sons. Two of them died before their father, but the five lines would struggle for power for most of the next 200 years. Three of those five families would produce kings of England, but the main struggle was between the House of Lancaster, descended from Edward's third son, John of Gaunt, and the House of York, descended from Edward's fourth son, Edmund of York. At first, the line of royal inheritance went smoothly enough, with Edward III's eldest, the Black Prince, making his son Richard his heir. Richard became king and ruled for 22 years. King Richard's uncle, John of Gaunt, had been his regent and was a man of immense influence. When John of Gaunt died in 1399, Richard disinherited Gaunt's firebrand of a son, Henry of Bolingbroke. Richard hoped to prevent a challenge to the throne. Instead, he provoked it. In response, Henry gathered popular support and deposed poor old King Richard, who died in captivity. John of Gaunt had married Blanche of Lancaster, and his Lancastrian descendants were a strong breed for a couple of generations. King Henry IV ruled well, though he is eclipsed by the martial victories of his son, Henry V. The victor of Agincourt would die at only 35 from dysentery, yet again leaving a royal son to be raised by regents. Henry VI was never the son his father deserved. A weak boy, he became a weak man and ruler. Yet such was the loyalty and reverence for the monarch that it would take a complete disaster to allow the younger Yorkist line to mount a true challenge. That disaster was the loss of all English lands in France. Richard, Duke of York, took advantage of the resulting riots and unrest in England and Wales, as well as the mental frailty of Henry. The young king was not a man able to rule or even understand a complex, wealthy and powerful court. When Henry failed to quickly produce a child, Richard had himself named heir by Parliament. When Henry collapsed into a catatonic state in 1453, it was no great leap to make Richard of York protector of the realm, king in all but name. After 16 months in a senseless state, King Henry VI recovered on Christmas Day, 1454. He had not seen his son born, but he now had an heir named Edward. Yet there was York, ruling in Henry's name. The seed sown with the sons of Edward III had become a bloody crop that would tear the country apart for the next 30 years. <laughs>